this kind of game and this kind of audience, spectatorship, for every Worcester basketball game. No pressure, right? Okay. I'm wondering which one I'm supposed to use here. All right. This one? Okay. So now to our, really this incredible moment in our history and in the history of our, of our great college. Thank you for joining all of us for this special event. I stand before you this afternoon with great pride, great excitement, as we celebrate the remarkable achievements and contributions of one of the most successful and respected ba college basketball coaches of all time, Worcester's own coach, Steve Moore. It is my deep honor to welcome Coach Steve Moore and his family and friends, members of Worcester's W Association, and all our loyal and generous Fighting Scots fans as we celebrate Coach Moore's impact on our student athletes, the college's basketball program, and the College of Worcester community as a whole. The Steve Moore Court was made possible by those Worcester alumni, families, friends, and loyal fans whose generosity established the Steve Moore Endowment at the College of Worcester. The Steve Moore Endowment will support all Fighting Scott student athletes and help enhance Steve Moore Court and Timken Gymnasium, ensuring a positive experience for current and future generations of all student athletes and the fans who support them. So thanks to all of you. We are grateful for each of you for making today's dedication possible and to you, Coach Moore, for inspiring this wonderful generosity. The Steve Moore Endowment and the Steve Moore Court 
honors your dedication, leadership, and the incredible impact of your 33 seasons as head coach on our Fighting Scots basketball program, its players, coaches, and fans. Coach Moore, your legacy at Worcester extends far beyond wins and losses, and your retirement in 2020 marked an end of an era. Under your leadership, Worcester made 28 appearances, that's out of 33 years, right? 28 appearances in the NCAA Division III championships, including a memorable run to the national championship game in 2011 and to the semifinals in 20, 2003 and 2007. The team's consistent excellence is also highlighted by an unprecedented 18 consecutive NCAA Division III conference qualifications. Unprecedented 18 consecutive. A streak that stands as the longest in Division III history and the seventh longest across all divisions, all divisions of NCAA men's basketball. Let's hear it for that. For your efforts, you were named NCAC Coach of the Year nine times, NABC District Coach of the Year of the Great Lakes five times, and voted Ohio College Basketball Coach of the Year in 2008. Your players' achievements are also plentiful, with 21 All-America certificates, five first-time National Association of Basketball Coaches laurels, and numerous other honors. Worcester also stands alone as the only NCAA Division III team of the 2000s with five players voted as first team National Association of Basketball Coaches All-Americans. The only Division III team, five players, this coach, our team. These players are Ian Franks, Daniel Hempe, Brian Nelson, Tom Port, and Doug Thorpe. In conclusion, thank you, Coach Moore, for your outstanding contributions to Worcester's basketball program, your unwavering commitment to excellence, and the lasting impact you have made in the lives of the athletes you coached, the coaches you mentored, and the fans who have had the pleasure of cheering you and your team on for 33 amazing seasons. May the Steve Moore Court welcome generations of students, athletes, and provide a place where their hard work, passion, and commitment, persistence, and excellence continues to honor your legacy and the legacy of all those whose impact is still felt and whose dedication to Worcester's outstanding athletic program continues to inspire us all. Again, thank you, Coach Moore. Thanks to each of our generous donors who made this moment possible for our students and the college. You know what comes next. Go Scots! It is now my pleasure to introduce and invite Coach Pine to the podium. Sort of speechless right now, but it was a heck of a game. But what I've told everybody, what makes this place so special is right here. All of our fans. That's what makes Worcester basketball what Worcester basketball is. There's not many places like this. It's very special. And I know as, as a player, as, a for, as our former players, our coaches, and our current players, this, this is why they come to Worcester to play basketball to play in front of the best fans in Division Three, and it's a great community, and uh, we gave you a great game today. Our guys really sold out in the second half, and I couldn't be proud of our guys. I want to thank you for supporting our team and being here today for the dedication of the Steve Moore Court. Thank you to all of our former players and their families 
Worcester alumni, members of the Worcester community, and fans of our program for your generous donations and support of the Steve Moore Endowment Fund and the naming of Steve Moore Corp. There have been a lot of special days in the history of Worcester basketball, but in my opinion, this is the most special. To have the opportunity to honor a man who has meant so much to this great institution, to our community, and college basketball. Coach Moore has had three unbelievable assistant coaches throughout his time at Worcester. His wife, Jane, and his two beautiful daughters, Beth and Emily. They deserve to be recognized. Stand up. They were just as important to Worcester basketball. Coach always said that he had two beautiful, wonderful daughters and a bunch of sons. Now I'd like all of his sons to stand up and be recognized. Stand up, Howard. You guys have gave our community a lot of good basketball for the last 30 some years. Thank you Jane, Beth, and Emily for sharing your husband and father with all of us and for welcoming us into your extended family. I have been fortunate to spend the last 33 years with Coach Moore as a player and a coach. He has had a huge impact on my life. He has been such a positive influence in all of his former players' lives. He taught us so many valuable lessons on the basketball court that prepared us for life after Worcester. Personally, when I talk about Coach Moore, I know a lot of you have heard me talk about him. I'm just honored to speak on behalf of all of our former players. And I asked some of our former players to give their thoughts on what made Coach Moore one of the greatest coaches in the history of college basketball. Marty Bidwell, class of 09. Coach Moore taught us all valuable life lessons on the court. The one that has helped me succeed in the corporate world more than any other skill I can possess is how to be successful while doing things the right way. We achieve success through hard work, determination, and toughness. We didn't take any shortcuts. He taught us to keep our heads down and never take anything for granted. Ian Franks, class of 2011. No matter how good I or my teammates were playing, he was always finding areas for us to work on. Coach's greatest strength was that he strove for perfection in everything. No shot was well contested unless it was a miss. As unrealistic as it was sometimes, that attitude just pushed everyone to become better and really try to meet that expectation. Ryan Gorman. Class of 99, Coach Moore developed myself and I know countless others as a leader in so many ways. Most notable to me is how Coach taught us a sixth sense of selflessness. Coach always put us, his players, first. He cared about our grades, our families, our personal lives, and how we carried ourselves on and off the court. It was always genuine, with love, and never felt forced. By seeing how Coach loves each of us, we trusted in modeling after him, caring about each other's success more than our own individually, the team's success more than personal accolades. He always got us to buy into a common person bigger than oneself and having fun together doing it. James Cooper, class of 08. Coach Moore was the father figure I never had. On the court, he pushed me to do things and play at a level I never thought I could play at. He didn't allow me to make excuses. He had the same compassion off the court when it came to me graduating college. He is the best coach I ever played for, and he is one of the best men I've ever known. Ryan Peden, class of 2000, outside of my father, 
Coach Moore has impacted me as much as anyone in my life. His passion, competitiveness, consistency are all traits that I aim to replicate, replicate in my own coaching career. Matt Smith, class of 2003, I never met a man with the level of intensity Coach Moore had. The intense face doesn't come close to the sheer amount of intensity that man possessed to compete. Brian Wycliffe, class of 2011, Coach Moore's passion and dedication to basketball was evident with his approach to coaching. You wanted to win for Coach. It was the best way to show respect and appreciation for all the sacrifice, energy, and effort that he put into us as players. He made it easy for me to remove personal goals and put team first and do whatever was needed to be successful. Eric Reby, class of 92. There is no question the effect Coach Moore had on me as a player, but more importantly was his impact on me as a person. His genuine compassion for others is unmatched. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't use the life skills he taught me. Because of the coach, I am a better husband, a better father, and a better man. And I totally agree with that. I know all those guys over there would too. When I personally think of Coach Moore, the words and thoughts that come to my mind, leader, motivator, competitor, tough, respectful, integrity, family, team, role model, winner. But the word that best describes Coach Moore better than any other, and Ryan Gorman already said it in his, is selfless. The definition of selfless is a person who is concerned more with the needs and wishes of others than with one's own. Unselfish. Coach Moore's picture ought to be in the dictionary right by that word. He has always deflected attention from himself and put it on his players and coaches. I'm sure he's going to get up here in a few minutes. He's going to talk about everybody but himself. That's just the way Coach Moore is. But today, Coach, is your day. This is your day. Thank God we won that game for your day. You know what I mean? There is not a more deserving person. I've told this to many people throughout the years. All the stats, the records, they're there. Everybody knows how great a coach Coach Moore was. Still is. Still helps us every day in practice. All these guys have gotten the opportunity to have Coach Moore coach them. And hopefully that continues to go on and on. Coach Moore was one of the best basketball coaches to ever coach college basketball. But more importantly to me, he is a way better man. So this is deserving for his basketball, but to me, it's more deserving because of the man he is. Congratulations, Coach Moore. I love you. I can't thank you enough for what you have done for me and my family. Next to the podium will be Alex Walker, class of 2024, women's basketball player. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alex Walker, and I'm a senior psychology major and a member of the women's basketball team. I'm from Twinsburg, Ohio, and after graduation, I'm planning to pursue my master's degree in school and clinical mental health counseling. I'm immensely proud to be a student athlete at the college, and I want to talk about my experience over the past four years. The best part about being a student athlete at the College of Worcester is the opportunity to experience a well-rounded education that integrates academic rigor with athletic commitment. The college emphasizes a supportive community of independent minds working together, and I've developed lifelong bonds while playing basketball here. 
Being a student athlete has given me amazing opportunities and meaningful experiences, like being the diversity, equity, inclusion representative for the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. In this role, I'm able to advocate for inclusion within student athletes within the student athlete community and represent the interests and concerns of underrepresented groups, ensuring their voices are heard. I've also helped collaborate with other student organizations, committees, and college administration to create a cohesive approach to diversity and inclusion on campus. Playing basketball here has given me the opportunity to be a leader on campus for all student athletes. Through athletics, I've learned effective skills which have enhanced my ability to communicate clearly, resolve conflicts, conflicts, and articulate ideas essential for effective leadership. These skills are transferable for leadership roles in life where collaboration and teamwork are essential. Athletics has provided me with opportunities to network with coaches, alumni, and other professionals, and leveraging these connections has opened doors for leadership opportunities, mentorship, and career guidance on campus and beyond for me. The college's emphasis on collaboration and community has made the establishment of the Steve Moore Endowment possible. The establishment of the Steve Moore Endowment through generous gifts from alumni, fans, and families is profoundly impactful for students, particularly for student athletes like me. As a student athlete, this kind of support is meaningful. It represents a community coming together to invest in the success and well-being of its members. The generosity of alumni, fans, friends, and families who donate, donated not only empowers current student athletes, but also strengthens the legacy of sports programs, creating a lasting impact on the entire athletic community. It, under, it underscores the idea that success is not just measured in wins and losses, but in the collective support and opportunities provided to help individuals thrive academically, athletically, and personally. On behalf of all current Fighting Scots, I thank you for your continued support and we are eternally grateful. Now please welcome Ryan Burgess to the podium. Ryan is a member of the class of 1993, a former member of the men's basketball team and one of the generous donors who helped make the Steve Moore Endowment and today's dedication possible. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. On behalf of the hundreds of former Fighting Scots who played for Coach Moore, I'm honored to have the opportunity to offer a few, a few remarks today. I stepped on Worcester's campus in August of 1989. One of the first things I did was walk over to the gym, and I ran into Coach Moore right outside of the building. He said something to the effect, Ryan, we're really excited to have you here. Just know you're going to need to work harder than you've ever worked before. But if you work hard, you'll be successful. And that was just the beginning of the life lessons I learned from him and indicative of what all his players learned from him. During that first year, I was once late for practice. Frankly, I lost track of time after class. When I arrived at practice, he very directly coached me on the importance of punctuality. I was never late again. Yet another life lesson learned, always be on time. He taught us to lead by example, quite literally. Coach Moore intensely participated in defensive drills by taking charges along the baseline to show the proper technique. On rebounding, he demonstrated how to pop it and chin it. Another symbolic lesson, that if life offers you a favor, just remember, pop it and chin it. He taught us the value of preparation. Without question, we were always better prepared than our opponents. And trust me, that lesson will always serve you well in life. He taught us to pursue excellence, not mediocrity, not parity, but excellence in everything we chose to do. We were expected to excel in the classroom, on the court, and in the community. He taught us the importance of embracing the concept of team. Despite our varied backgrounds, rural, urban, private school, public school, shooters, pastors, defenders, when we united as a team to pursue a goal, we discovered we have far more in common than our differences. This lesson, too, transcends sports. He taught us how to handle loss. In the grand scheme of things, athletic losses are insignificant. Yes, they do sure sting in the moment. But in those losses, he taught us to handle defeat with grace and resilience. He taught us to be tough hombres, as he would say. That prepared many of us for life's true losses. Like the devastating death of a dear college friend, or the loss of a child, or the loss of a spouse. He made sure we knew it was a privilege to attend and play at Worcester. 
Privilege, when earned through dedication and hard work, is aspirational. When you play at Worcester, you always sense the success of the teams that preceded you. Though Coach let us know that privilege merely sets the stage, but victory comes from relentless efforts and teamwork. In other words, never take life's opportunities for granted. So when you see his name on this court, I hope you think of these life lessons as much as you think of his 867 career wins. His commitment to the holistic development of his players, emphasizing academics, character, and community involvement is truly his most enduring legacy. <clears throat> Finally, I also had the good fortune to play with some of Worcester's greats. Stan Aukamp, Eric Reby, Brian Buchanan, and a much younger Coach Klein. <laughs> By the way, if you ask Eric how he became so good, he'll tell you it's because he had to go against me every day in practice, so you're welcome, Eric. The endowment was established in Coach Moore's name will help former fighting Scots like us and all of you pay forward to future fighting Scots. Paying forward is a phrase that Woody Hayes, the legendary Ohio State football coach, used often. Actually, he repurposed that saying from another all-time great, Ralph Waldo Emerson, who said, quote, in the order of nature, we cannot render benefits to those from whom we receive them, or only seldom. But the benefit we receive must be rendered again, line for line, deed for deed, cent for cent, to somebody, end quote. In other words, we are all obligated to pay it forward. And by the way, only at a great liberal arts institution will you hear Emerson quoted after a basketball game. You never know whose life you will impact with one phrase, one gesture, one glance, one kind act, one highly animated exhortation to hustle. Coach, it may be hard for you to appreciate how you shape so many young men's lives for the better, but we will be forever grateful and we'll do our best to pay that forward. Go Scots. For Coach Moore, would you please join me at the podium? It is our pleasure to present you with this gift in appreciation of your service to the college. Notice something, everybody. We had a little trouble on the handoff. Who came to the rescue for his own present? Coach Moore. <laughs> so please, Coach Moore, come and share a few remarks with everyone. Thank you very much, President Cole. This gives me an opportunity to thank a lot of people. The first group of people I want to thank is the guy sitting over there, thank you for getting the job done today, guys. Thank you very much. That was big. That was big not only for this ceremony, but big for the season. Great victory, guys. Congratulations. Proud of you. It is an honor to have your name on a court. Anytime a coach is honored, it is a result of what players have done. I used to think I was the luckiest coach ever, but better said than that, we were the luckiest basketball program ever. Because what I want to say today 
And the day itself is not about me. It is about our players, and it is great that so many of them are here today. Even though after having an outstanding winning tradition under Moe's Hole and Al Van Wee, the program was on a downward swing when we came. We were very fortunate that there were some players in the program who were quality men and outstanding leaders who through their example of hard work and dedication we were able to establish the culture that we needed to build a successful program. I want to say that when I first started to prepare my remarks, I plan to name the men who were here, who, I'm, who I was referring to. Those guys who were the players that were here when I came. Then, as I went on to the next step of talking about the first recruiting class, I started naming the players who we were fortunate to get. As I went along, I realized if I named one player, I had to name them all. Then my plan was to work in, the name, work in the name of every player who played for us in this speech. This excited me <laughs> because every single player was important to our success. It wasn't going to just be a listing of players. I was going to weave the names in, weave them in by which coaches recruited them, assistant coaches and telling a few stories along the way. So I was in the process of this when Je Jane, Beth, and Emily told me I could not name every player. player. <laughs> if I missed one guy, it would be disastrous. I said, well, I can go over the rosters and make sure I don't miss anybody. <laughs> but then they said they would not sit through a 40-minute speech. <laughs> They convinced me, and I realized if I named every player who has been such an important part of the program, my talk might take an hour, and Jane, Beth, and Emily would not be the only ones who would, who would leave. <laughs> there are many of these players here today. Also here today are some of the outstanding men who served as student coaches and managers and very important members of our team. You all know how special you are to me, and you are why my name is on the court. You guys. I was going to plan to have you all stand and be recognized, but Coach Line's already done that, so I don't think we should do that again and take the time. <laughs> Thanks, Coach Line, for doing that. Suffice it to say that everyone felt we were very lucky to get commitments from the guys in our first recruiting class. We were very lucky. Most everyone knows the players I'm talking about without mentioning names, so. I won't mention their names, but one was a 6'9 All-American, another was a great all-around all guard who was first team all-conference for four years and an immediate impact on us. And talk about luck in recruiting, that's going to be the kind of a theme in my talk today. This guard was the son of the beloved Betty Jo. Secretary of the college. But the third guy in the class did not have much, much, as much notoriety. But that third guy was, was a great teammate and loved by all. That was the, second, uh, the first recruiting class. My wife and daughters did agree I could make a few exceptions and complete the theme of my talk. I received permission to tell a story of our second recruiting class that you were just one player who played for four years. What a player he was. Brian Buchanan, and he's here today, flew in from the West Coast. He was as good a defensive player as we ever had. He was the MVP of the NCAC senior year when he led us to the NCAC Tournament Championship. I wish we could say we did a great recruiting job on Brian. I must admit, he came because his sister, Worcester alum Linda, wrote a letter to me and said, I had better call Brian, or else he was going to Wittenberg. <laughs> so I called Brian. When I finished today, 
everyone will realize why I need to give a few names, or talk about a few of the recruits, and the way we, they were, the way, and the reason they came, I guess. Not all of our good players just fell into our laps. It had a lot to do with the assistant coaches who recruited us for us. We had only three different men fill the one time or the one full time assistant coaching position that we have, that we have had, and that we have. Three in 33 years. The first of these was Kevin Logson. He was a young, intelligent guy who had just graduated from Worcester and did a great job for us. The second guy, Mike Worrell, came to us luckily because his mom lived in Worcester. So good fortune again, luck. Mike was a tremendous recruiter. He was responsible for bringing in four W Association Hall of Fame members. We know, you all know who these guys are, I'm sure. Plus a guy named Philip Yance, who most certainly would have been an All-American, but he was sadly lost after one year due to a motorcycle accident. So Mike was a great recruiter. He recruited many other players who are sitting here. That was a great relationship with Wands. All conference players are guys who were good enough to be all conference had they been on different teams. And some men who were tremendous leaders and just tremendous teammates. Men who may not have been playing much varsity time in varsity games, but worked very hard in practice, pushing the stars to make us a better team. One such player was Mark Kuiper, who was with us for only one year before him being killed in an accident working for ODOT. Mark was a very dedicated player. In fact, I think he must, might have been the most dedicated player in 33 years that we had here. And we had the very good fortune of having so many part-time and volunteer coaches many of whom were former players that stayed on coach a year or two. Some move on to coaching careers, like Lamont Paris. He coached our JV team for two years, and now he's the head coach at South Carolina. Others became successful in different positions, different occupations, I should say. Um, Tom Port coached with us and went on to be a lawyer. Matt Sprang coached for a year and went on to be a successful banker. So. That was a big key to our success, I think, is having the players who played for us, even though they weren't full-time coaches and even most time weren't even paid at all, volunteered, but they helped us because they were able to teach our guys what they went through. Randy Worrell was a big part of our program for over 20 years. A man who was we were very fortunate to have part-time for the longest run was Patrick Rufin. Patrick, your dedication and time spent with us was was very much appreciated. He came back to help Coach Klein during COVID when, when he really needed another guy. Thank you, Patrick. How many programs have had a part-time coach the quality of Bruce Martin for 26 years? so much to our program, he came to practice every day, he was a, he's an outstanding teacher on the court, coached during games, and when he retired from teaching, which is quite a few years ago, I would call him a full-time film watcher, because I think he had a den in his house, where he watched film all day long before he came to practice, and was tremendous in preparing us for our opponents. Got to the point where Coach Klein and I didn't have to even know the plays of the other team because Coach Martin knew them and was awesome. Well, that brings us to the, the third full-time coach, assistant coach. No one is more responsible for the success of the fighting Scots than Doug Klein. First is a player. Steve Roby, one of our several fans who come to practice every day, said the other day that the guys always come up to him and say, how good was Coach Klein as a player? Well, the answer, guys, is Coach Klein was a great player, a fierce competitor, unselfish, and a winner. 
When we were in a tough competitive game at timeouts, I always looked into the eyes of our players. I could tell who was going to compete and not back down. I started using the phrase, I want to see fire in your eyes. And that phrase came about because when I, when I looked into Doug's eyes during the timeout, I actually did see fire in his eyes. <laughs> it was red, and the fire came out. It was a darn good feeling knowing we had him playing for us, I'll tell you that. It makes me think of another player who was intense and a fierce competitor. Played before Doug. In these same situations, when I looked at Mark Stanley, I would see smoke coming out of his ears. <laughs> he was a fierce competitor. We've had some great competitors over the years. Then Doug started coaching the year after he graduated, and when Mike became the head coach at Illinois College, Doug became the full-time assistant coach. Not long before, he was like a second head coach. How many programs at any level had the continuity of a coaching staff like we did? Doug was the envy of all Division III programs. How fortunate were we to have Doug Kahn teaching, coaching, and recruiting so many good players. All those years he recruited. He worked hard. He recruited nine All-Americans, one of whom was, was a Division III Player of the Year. I don't have to name names. I'm not allowed to name names. <laughs> it's a few. Some others who could have easily been chosen All-American, other very good players, leaders and unselfish players who would have been superstars on other teams. And again, some selfless men who were great teammates. We had so many of those guys over the years who were great teammates. And worked hard in practice every day so that the starters would be better, so that the key subs would be better, that we would be better as a team. We continue to get players who fell into our laps. Rodney Mitchell, who was not recruited by many schools at all, and just a little bit by us, came to us because of our good friendship with his high school coach, Chris Adams. Rodney just kept getting better and better and had tremendous junior and senior years. Rodney's a real success story. Many of you remember Rodney's game-winning jumper in the lane right down here when we beat John Carroll in this gym to send us to the Sweet 16 his junior year, the first year we went to the Final Four. But the number one example of having a player handed to us is a player by the name of Ian Franks. Ian visited on his own, six foot, about six foot maybe, when he walked into the office. He started off playing just JV. But by mid-January, he was our seventh man. He grew to six foot four, and became an All-American, led us to the national championship game his senior season. I think most everyone would call this pure luck. We also had a player from Toledo, who, like Ian, recruited himself. This player played JV only his freshman year. But by his senior year, he was as valuable to us as his two recruited classmates and fellow captains. Our former players come back for games and for our golf outings. They stay close to the program. The program and the Worcester basketball families meant so much, mean so much to them. But Coach Klein said, and I agree with him, that no one of our former players loved coming back more than Warren's. Justin loved Worcester basketball more than anyone did. Justin loved his teammates and his players that played before him and after him. He knew them all. Warren's the epitomized the Worcester family player. We all love Justin and Rick, Ann, and Jim. We love you and are so very glad you're here today. We have also had the good fortune of having tremendous support from our fans, faculty, and administration. The Rebounders Club and all the community support are a big part of our culture. Al Van Wee was a basketball coach and athletic director ahead of his time. He, along with President Henry Copeland, had the Worcester Athletic Program positioned well when we arrived. And how fortunate were we to have Stan Hales become president. 
I know of no better person than Stan Hales. And Stan loved athletics and competition. He put on the demonstrations at halftime that you all remember watching him play badminton. Stan was a national champion in badminton. And athletic directors, Bill McHenry was the perfect person to replace Coach Van Wee when he retired. Bill was a great family, he was a great friend, and such a quality man. Keith Becker was a very enthusiastic AD who was very supportive and truly wanted all teams to have success. I'm talking about our administration's administrative support, which is awesome. Carolyn Newton, in charge of athletics, was, was a provost. At that time, the provost was in charge of athletics, and she was in charge for a good many years. Carolyn was very supportive of athletics, and I want to express my gratitude to Carolyn. President Sarah Bolton was supportive of our program. And we'll always be indebted to President Grant Cornwall and Peg for all their great support and all they did and continue to do, not only for Worcester basketball, our basketball program, but for all the athletic programs and for the College of Worcester overall. Grant and Peg. Thank you so much. I will say again, this day is not about me. My name is on the court, and what makes me feel good is that so many of you here wanted it to happen. I am very thankful for all the good things that have happened with basketball in my life. I truly feel that others are responsible for what has happened. If I did coach well, it was because of Bob Hamilton, the man that coached me at Wittenberg. I still am amazed that I was able to play college basketball in such a great program. And I was truly fortunate to play for someone I respect and love so much as a person and a coach. I was an average college basketball player, but I learned how to compete and motivate them from Coach Hamilton. I guess if there's one thing I did well, it was motivate people and compete. I will always be indebted to Coach Larry Hunter, who gave me an opportunity to coach college basketball as his assistant, and whom I learned a lot about coaching. I also learned a lot from the teammate, Bill Brown, who became the rival coach at Wittenberg. And I think everyone here will agree that that was some rivalry. And I believe it will continue to be so. Basketball coaches have always learned a lot from football coaches. Football coaches will say basketball coaches just copy what they do. It's probably pretty true. I was fortunate to be on the coaching staff at Wittenberg when Dave Maurer was a football coach and AD. How lucky I was to learn from one of the best football coaches in the history of the game. I was so very fortunate to have some tremendous teammates who were great college players. I learned from them. Outstanding men and our best friends to this day. Some of you here, not many probably, but I know the administrators, got to know Patrick Beasley through Marcia when she was the Vice President of Human Resources. Patrick was Bill Russell to me. So many years too young to know what Bill Russell was, I guess. I talk to our players all the time about the old time NBA guys, right, EJ? And I, told, I told EJ to look up Bill Russell and watch videos of him. But Patrick was to us, Bill Russell, defensive player, I miss Patrick. Don Lynham and Tom Dunn are here. They were great college players, tremendous college players, and the very best teammates that anyone could, anybody could ever have, ever possibly ever have. I've also been lucky in my personal life. The epitome of this luck is being married to Jane who is the best coach's wife and continues to do everything for me. To me, this day is about her because of all the sacrifices she made over the years. And I have two awesome daughters who are married to fine men. Finally, we have four grandchildren who are the joy of our lives. I love you, Grace. 
Jack, Gwen, and Bo. I love you guys. I've used the words luck and good fortune a lot today. My good friend Dave Rube once said he doesn't believe in luck, meaning I think he meant good teams play through unfortunate situations. He was speaking in terms of coaching and playing, competing. As I said earlier, I used to think I was the luckiest coach ever, but I said that we have been the luckiest staff program. I used to think this, but no longer I don't think this. I don't think it has been luck. I think we must give all the credit to God. I truly believe it is God's providence that has allowed us to build a successful program, to give us a platform and the credibility to honor him and to spread his word. I believe we are being led to use that platform to glorify him. Again, I say we because it is the total basketball program that achieved and continues to achieve success. I did not build it. God provided us with the personnel to build the program, and it continues with Coach Hines, the head coach, the present staff and players. So I thank God for the opportunity to coach so many outstanding players and quality people, quality people more so than talent. Most of all, I thank God. Most of all, I thank God for sending his son, Jesus, my Lord and Savior, to die on the cross for us. Thank you.